it's the ferry I'm here to introduce the ranch ferry 200 grain single bevel we've made some modifications over at tough head a couple of changes that i wanted to uh, have a ranch ferry specific 200 grain broadhead modifications better angle of attack etc and if you guys are breed you might buy a cool shirt big 1984 fiction again it's in the banner below uh, so if you want one of those, you can get one, but uh, let's move on to the Ranch Ferry 200 grain broadhead. Walk around, I guess you could call it. Stay tuned. Uh -uh, look at this. Look at the blood. Look at the blood. <laughs> Okay, I've been working with the guys at uh, Tough Head, Sirius, Seth and the gang on building a 200 grain broadhead with a decent angle of attack, tonto tip, some other features that we were looking for, just continuously modifying. So if you work, if you, you know, look at different companies, some companies aren't really modifying anything. They're not making any changes. They're not trying to go to the next level or offering many options in their broadhead. They just say, well, it worked for the last three years. We won't try anything different. <laughs> I think it's fun. So the first time I showed this, just as a real aside, some house cleaning here. I did a reel or something on Instagram and I immediately get accused of copying another broadhead or two that are kind of established in the market. That's pretty wild. So I'm going to show a few things that look similar, but are different. You see that? Those are all crankbaits and topwaters. A walk, the, that's nice. A walk the dog day, it looks like that. Generally looks like that with seven different brands. They all have hooks on crankbaits and stuff, it's treble hooks, right? Different features amongst those treble hooks, arrow shafts are generally hollow tubes with a knock on one end, fletchings, and a point on the other, and some kind of system that screws the point on. Tires are round, doorknobs look about the same. I mean, you can get some cool ones with handles and stuff. Windshields, light bulbs, stuff like that. How about... <laughs> screwdrivers and stuff and Joe Biden stickers. It's amazing that pliers with different brands still kind of look like that. Yeah, there's side cutters and all that stuff. So here's the walk around to what we changed for the Ranch Ferry 200 grain broadhead. There's a few of them sitting here. They come in a cool back metal case. Okay. It's pretty straightforward but we made it longer than the previous version of the Evolution. For a better angle of attack, meaning this angle right here isn't so blunt and triangular, we put a notch in the back of it, and that is for blood rings. So these are 15 grains. When you order blood rings, if you decide to shoot this as a four blade, this slot in the back is where the blood rings go, and you put them in like that. Drop it in and you've got bleeder blades that are also single bevel in a single bevel machined broadhead. So if you choose to use that platform, it's fine. You can tell they're kind of small. We did not want to make them uh, reduce its ability to break bone, but to open just the hide up a little bit more for those who want that, that's fine. In the case with the blood rings, there are washers that weigh the same. Last time I remember these weigh about 15 grains. It kind of doesn't matter. They're not 100 grains, right? They're 10 or 15 grains. If you use the washers, it'll fly the same behind your field points. Shooting 200 grain field points, it might be 215 grains. It would be an exact match to this shooting the bleeders. You would shoot a 200 grain field point with the little washers on that. It's pretty straightforward. You put the washer on the back side, just like you would on the back of the broadhead. You put on the back of your field points, and it's an exact weight match, okay? The main bevel on this broadhead, what I call the pressure side, is 28 degrees. So 
I've already done a sharpening video that I put up a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago or so, dating myself here with the WorkSharp Precision Adjust. It's super detailed and shows you how to use this tool to sharpen single bevel broadheads. That's all I was covering, but I happened to use this one. Why wouldn't I use my own broadhead advertising stuff? But it would work with every single bevel broadhead. So if you have single bevel broadheads, go look at that video. There'll be a card pop up. There'll be a link in the description. There's a lot of detail there that you need. It's not hard. I just fiddled with this thing for six months. I bought it myself about six months ago, obviously, and figured out how to do it. And it's super straightforward once you figure it out, but the detail in that video is necessary. But you can sharpen any single bevel broadhead under about a 32 degree main bevel with that tool. Works killer for this unit, as I show in that video, and gets them super sharp. So that's the walk around. We wanted a little bit longer platform I wanted a better angle of attack. I didn't want it to be so short and blunt. I wanted it a little bit more approachy like this. And then I wanted you to have the option of shooting bleeder blades if you wanted to shoot them. And that's like a Swiss Army knife kind of deal. You can shoot it with or without. You could run out of bleeder blades and just not use them and go hunting. You shoot, miss, hit a rock, your bleeder blade breaks, take the bleeder blades off, keep slinging them, sharpen them back up. Of course, that's that. Now, one thing that probably ain't gonna happen, is probably not gonna send it around and let people test it. Why would you do that? I mean, there'd be some people that'd wanna test it and like shoot through brick walls and stupid boards and car hoods, that's fine. It's gonna survive. But I don't need anyone to test it because I test it the way it should be tested on meat. So a video is gonna be out here in a couple of weeks, there's the broadhead. It was resharpened after killing a pig. The blood trail was phenomenal. It wasn't a huge pig, but it was meat tested. This is the red, white, and blue. You gotta earn the red, white, and blue. We'll give you white and blue. This is the Supernova SD. I was testing it for Sirius. What we have Apollos and all the other arrows. My son actually sharpened this using the work sharp. And uh, sexy, okay? So obviously they get really sharp. I tested it myself. And then after I used the work sharp, I used the ranch face drop on it just to touch it up at the end. All right, so that's the quick walk around of the things that we wanted to modify. Um, we're not going to be offering a 150 or a, or a 125. I, again, I've said this about three times already. I wanted the angle of attack to stay as long as we get it. And when you reduce the mass of the broadhead, you have to actually shorten the broadhead and it makes it more blunt and not as efficient of a penetrator from what we've seen in testing. 125 and 150 grain single bevels exist and they are doing fine. I've just chosen not to go there. Does that mean I'm probably not gonna make as much money as I could? That's absolutely correct. But I'm just one of those guys who's kind of stubborn about this stuff and the angle of attack really matters. One thing you could do is reduce your insert mass. So you could shoot 200 grains on an aluminum insert. There's a lot of adjustable inserts out there. So you could reduce your insert mass raise the broadhead quality and, and, and weight. I've said this to a lot of people um, on text and stuff who are asking about that and on Insta. Feel free to message me if you have any questions. Um, they say, hey man, I'm thinking about shooting a 150 grain insert and a 125 grain broadhead. And in my opinion, you're going the wrong direction on that. Um, you know, let's say you, tested your arrows or you've got a ranch ferry test kit, let's say it tweaks out at 250, okay? And you think, hey, I'll shoot 125 grain insert and 125 grain broadhead. I'm not trying to sell you broadheads. I just want you to think about this. The only way to make broadheads lighter is to take steel out of them, reduce to aluminum, or thin out the blades. Conversely, not really, in the same line there, 
the only thing that kills anything or has to take on impact is the broadhead. There ain't an insert on the earth ever killed a deer or an elk. The inserts don't do anything but hold this to the shaft. Hey, well, you're not supposed to cut in a different day and wear a different shirt and have transmission fluid in the back. It's glaringly obvious it's not the same day. Real quickly, this is the final link in the Ranch Ferry Lethality System. So you can go to Sirius Archery, look in the Ranch Ferry Store, you can Google Ranch Ferry Store. We have bear shaft test kits, we have fletched arrows that are awesome. I have videos on how to do bear shaft, how to knock tune fletched arrows, how to sharpen broadheads, how to sharpen this broadhead, how to sharpen any single bevel broadhead. Perfect arrow flight, structural integrity, good forward to center and now a bomber of a broadhead. And by the way, that black stuff on my shirt in this video, that's rain. Uh, in the middle of the video, I walked outside to talk to my neighbor and got rained on. So it's not black dandruff. So, all right, back to the review. <laughs> Are they necessary? Absolutely. Well, you can glue them on, but that's a little extreme. Most people do not want to go to that depth or length to buy a traditional broadhead with a five degree taper inside and actually JB weld them together. I have arrows like that, but really rarely people do that except for dangerous game. 99% of people have some kind of insert system, screw the points together, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm not trying to say something. I just want you to think about this. Heavier broadheads are going to be thicker. They're more prone to be made of steel. You start going into the one piece world where there aren't screws and notches and stuff holding the blades, clamping together, possibly reducing your structural integrity. That is a machined one piece tool. So when you arrows flying through the air and then it makes an impact with the animal, you have something that's extremely rigid. The steel's higher quality more likely to keep moving forward and not have any wiggle spots or tend to break. Just think about that. There's so many options with inserts these days, you can easily reduce the insert mass and increase your broadhead mass and end up in the same place, but have a really high quality impact tool when it finally slams into your target and I promise you, you don't know if you're hitting ribs, scapula edge, top of the humerus, etc. In a perfect world, every shot just impacts the rib cage and the thorax where it's relatively soft and easy to penetrate. But if you watch my channel or if it's the first time you're on here, I don't plan for that. I plan for maybe the wind blows, I make a mistake, the deer ducks moves out of the way, misjudge the range a little bit, and you just want to have a little bit higher integrity penetrator on the front of your arrow to get through whatever it hits. So that's the walk around, bleeder blade option, one piece, nice angle of attack, bloody arrow that I did already. Works like a champ. And obviously I showed you, gets real sharp. So that's that. Subscribe if you want to, I don't care. I mean, you can do what you want, right? It's free country. Make 1984 fiction again, that'd be helpful. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, so you know the whole heavy arrow thing, everybody says, well, you lose your distance and yada yada and it, ar it arches, you know? Well, I just snuck up on this odd ad, bet it, it got to 25 yards, okay? With his ass to me and he wouldn't get up. So I shot him in the ass, check this out. There's the entry on his ass. Came out. Came out his chest. Right here. Right here. Buried in the dirt or rock. I can't even find the damn thing. So, go. Yep. 650 grains.